This is Nicole Hetty from Paper Tray Ink, and today I'm going to show you how to do the hand-drawn frame that I do a lot of times on projects. It's really easy to do, and it can really finish off a project, especially when you um, are creating something that's clean and simple with very few layers. I'm going to start off with um, showing you my cardstock. I've got an A2 card base um, created from fine linen cardstock. And then I have a piece of white cardstock that's cut to three and three quarters by five inches. And I'm going to start by stamping my tulips. I'm using Wishing You, designed by Melissa Bickford. And I'm going to start with the stems and leaves using ripe avocado ink. I'm going to stamp the first one right there. And when you're doing these particular stems, you just want to pay attention that you have the actual stem, not the leaves, the stem, um, so that it is following along the edge of the card well and straight. I'm going to go ahead and follow up with the small stem from the set. I love how clean and simple these images are. It makes it so easy to work with them. There's the second one. And then I'm going to go back to the large one again. Several light taps with a big image like this helps to get really good ink distribution. So there's all my stems. Next I'm going to do the tulips, the actual tulip tops, and then for this I'm using Berry Sorbet ink. Once again, several light taps. And I'm going to add the largest tulip first. Right there, beautiful. And then go for the medium sized tulip, which will go all the way to the left. Followed by the smallest tulip, which will go in the center. And the reason why you don't want to go large, medium, small is you get more visual balance if you do it a little bit out of order like I've done here. So there's your tulips. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add the sentiment and this is from Think Big Favorites number three. And I'm going to go add that right on top of the tulips like this. When I'm doing a large sentiment like this and it needs to be perfectly placed, I like to use a larger block because it helps me put it exactly where I want it. Now, as you can see, I'll just show you really quick here. If I was to go ahead and put this on my card base now, it looks fairly plain. It looks like it needs a little bit of something. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the black frame I showed you at the beginning. And I think it will add that perfect finishing touch. What I use is a ruler and a pencil to start with. And rather than drawing and outlining the whole frame all the way around the card, creating a lot of stuff for you to erase, I like just marking off the corners with pencil. Um, for this particular frame, I'm doing it at 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of the card front. So I just start and work my way around and mark 3 eighths of an inch. So right here I'm just going to create a little tick mark. And then I'm going to turn the card front and create a second tick mark. And this ends up creating the intersecting point for me to place my ruler. When I go around to draw my frame. So there's that. I'm going to do this corner. Okay. 
this corner. Plus, when you do it this way, it gives you less that you have to erase later, which I like. There's just going to be a few things to erase. Not much. Okay. Okay, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and get started with the actual drawing. Um, I get asked about what kinds of pens I use all the time. This is a precision pen by American Crafts. They come in several um, different tip sizes. I'm using the uh, 0.05 millimeter today. Um, the reason why I like these is that they have a really nice consistency to them. Um, they don't tend to create large blots in the middle of your line. They're acid-free, fade-proof, waterproof, non-bleeding, um, and I just love the, um, the great results I get with them every single time I use them. So I highly recommend those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my ruler up with the corner marks that I made. And if you can see right here, just barely, you can see the letter I. I want my line to end right at the top of the dot of the I. So what I'm going to do is start at the corner, go straight down, and omit the little part of the tulip there, and then stop at the I. Now if you notice, I kept a nice smooth motion. I didn't keep the pen in one place uh, for very long because that can cause a little bleeding, a little puddle. Um, and it just helps to keep everything clean and um, neat when you keep everything moving and don't hold the pen in one position for too long. So now I've lined it up with my um, two more of my corner marks and I'm starting at one corner and going all the way across like so. And my second one. And you want to be careful to stop exactly where you want to stop. I mean, be aware of what you're doing. Pay attention. And it's really a pretty easy process. Now, like I did for the letter I, I'm stopping right before the letter M here. And I went right across the leaves and stems for the tulips at the bottom there. So there you have that. Now all I have to do is go back in and erase the marks that I made at the beginning. And like I said when we were making those marks, by doing this you have very, very little to erase and it keeps everything nice and square. Now I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to my card front. Just a little bit of tape here. Again, this was a fine linen A2 card base. I'm just going to adhere that in place like that. And there is the finished card. I hope you enjoyed the project I shared with you today and some of the tips and techniques as well. And I also hope to see some of your projects using your own version of a line frame. Thanks for joining me today. Get creative.